we've been watching all the pitches of all the startups uh, uh, of the Buma Music Meets Tech uh, conference. And of course, the most important thing today is to present uh, the winner. Uh, well, it looks like uh, you are the winner. So number eight was the best one of the 12. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> so, 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 so how surprised were you? I was quite surprised, I would say, because uh, I didn't have a team. The team was comprised of one. So uh, I was expecting, you know, someone for a company that would have a team established to win. But I knew my core beliefs. That's one thing that I knew that, and that was not going to change regardless of whether I won or not. Take it back now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what, what they always say, was, isn't uh, it, about startups? It's all about uh, the team. But, but uh, you can have a team of one, I assume. <laughs> uh, for today. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for future, no, definitely I would need to have a team. And I, w I want to have a team where, but credible people, you know, like people whom you can who see the same thing as you do. Yeah. And that's what's really key for me at this point. And hey, before we go on, of course, we did uh, we, we recorded the interview earlier on today and it, it is online as well. Okay. But, but uh, uh, do the, the, the briefest uh, pitch of what you do once again for who's watching now. Okay, absolutely. Uh, number eight today is... Uh, oops, yeah, it's... This. <laughs> we've, seen, we've, seen the, we've seen the prize. That's good. It looks good. Yeah. So number so eight is... So what it does is it takes the sensors present in your smartphone and it understands the context that you're in. And this is running completely natively on your device. And it uses that context to recommend music for you. Now, this is something that we've been thinking of for, the long, for a long time, to really unlock the power of smartphones in our hands. And not just smartphones. You can think of in future smart watches and belts and glasses, all these things where data is being you know, produced. But we're not really doing anything. We're just talking about big data. So music, what it does is it allows us to easily connect with people and with users. And it's something that is, uh, you know, we as consumers, I would really love to have that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Hey, thanks, and let's, uh, Ralph, uh, maybe first to you, because you've you've been interviewing them all uh, over here. Yes, yeah, it's, it's getting a bit noisy uh, around here, so right. uh, if we all ta talk loud, we uh, should be uh, able to hear uh, each other. Um, first, about all the, the, the 12 pitches you've, you've uh, had over here, what was your overall uh, conclusion? Well, uh, I think that uh, what we found as the jury, particularly when we had our final deliberations to see what was moving the, the ball forward in innovation, in something that really met with a future consumer public uh, tech music need, and thirdly, someone that was showing a real kind of uh, creative innovation that really ties in with the spirit of Buma, because if you look historically, Buma always developed great music from the Netherlands. And today's world, which is so global, and with the Netherlands always being uh, invested in being a great trading nation, today trading in music and trading in social media is so important. But uh, what we came to the conclusion was that standards this year were very high. There was a very interesting spread of companies that were in the live business, the ticketing business, <coughs> uh, looking at many different ways to be able to enhance the musical output of uh, the creators and finding ways in which you could use technology to really uh, uh, develop a whole new sales impetus for music. And that really is the essence of what I think Boomer does so effectively. And Andy Zondervan, who is really responsible for all of this, always had that vision of understanding this new delta where tech and music have to work together, but that doesn't uh, overlook the fact that you still need great musical creativity to hit people's emotions. Yeah, uh, and Monique, a uh, member of the jury as well, and, and earlier on we talked, and you said one of the things I I, uh, I see here is all the the enthusiasm, the the, say, the, say the passion of all the uh, uh, startups. Uh, later on, you've been talking to more people. Is that st is that still yeah, the thing yeah, you go on with? I actually talked to all twelve of them. Um, well, it is because um, the music industry is is by and large dominated by a few big software companies, not even music companies, software companies. And so, how do you find something in that? enormous field with these huge players where you can make a difference. I mean, you need a lot of confidence and optimism to, yeah. to start something. In that uh, and is this team of one going to make a difference? I don't know, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I think the jury, we, had, we honestly had a big deliberation because, you know, some of the other companies that we also commended, like, like TicketSwap, you know, they, they've made their mark, they're extremely successful, they're very clever, they're very good, and this is something new. And it, it still has to prove 
I mean, I, I think the ID will definitely be in the market, but it will, you will have to prove that you are the one to, you know, to bring it to the market. So, so in the end we decided this is also an award to stimulate new entrepreneurship and new ideas. And that's the reason why in the end we said, you're the one. Yeah. Uh, I, I, um, uh, Chris, uh, what was your uh, what so take on it? So from my side, it's one of the guys who's in danger of just talking about big data all the time without actually applying it. It was really interesting to see not just good use of data, not just good application, but also additional data sources. Using the sensors on the phone is not something most people think of. It's something that definitely can be investigated and the opportunity to inform where you are, what you're doing, what your routine looks like. If you're heading north up this road, the only time you ever go there is for the gym. At which point, let's give you either, I don't know, some classical music to mellow you out, or more likely something that gets you going in anticipation. I feel like three years from now, when much more data is collected this way, so we talk about the internet of things, we talk about a connected kind of consumer, I feel like there's more and more benefit coming your way because the consumer is better understood because more things are measured, at which point the job becomes almost easier, not harder over time. Which is not true of most things. Yeah, and you said you were uh, uh, surprised. Uh, yeah, uh, surprised because uh, you, you thought yourself that a team uh, would uh, want. Right. So, what are the next steps for you? What What do you need yeah. to get a step further? Well, if I have to put, you know, uh, put the first next step is I've been getting a lot of user feedback. Is to act on the user feedback. That is the first step for me, because uh, users will drive. So even with both the business models that we want to try out, the first thing is. Without the user traction, there is no business model. So without the users being satisfied, everything else is secondary. So from my research thesis and also going forward from the logs that we've collected over the on our servers to see is what aspects of things can be improved upon. And that's, you know, with any technology, nothing's perfect. You have to keep improving. And uh, I know at least at this point, there's a lot of things that I would love to do, but I'm constrained by this buddy. So uh, the first thing is you know, to find my potential co-founder. Yeah. And then as I basically transition from a role where I'm doing everything from a product development point of view, also try to get the traction, but also head it in a way that it sort of stays true the, to the vision. Yeah. And that's the main thing. Yeah. Hey, hey what, what, what was the price? The, uh, the, a price? Is that money? Is that uh, oh, consultancy? Is that euros. help? Of the 5,000 euros. 5,000 yeah. euros. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are hey. weekends where you don't. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I went on this Friday to Groningen and I won 5,000 euros. <laughs> yeah. So, so where are you going next week? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, and, and, uh, and if you have given him, uh, all, all of you, give him one advice. Uh, so let's start, uh, start with, with, with Ralph. Advice. Yeah, advice. One advice. Wow. Uh, let me think. Try and surround yourself with people that are smarter than you, particularly in looking at your development, and try and find smart money, not dumb money, smart money. Yes, I, I think the same thing. I mean, find some people from the industry who've done some excellent work. I mean, the funny thing is with, with digital that we've had 20 years of digital, so some people out there are there and are really keen to help develop young people. So find some you know, mentors out there to help you and uh, develop your next steps. Going last was a bad decision, wasn't it? Those are both excellent bits of advice. I, I think at the same time, so be true to yourself. So you've got the technology background, you understand what the technology can do. I think as someone who founded the company 18 months ago, I find it hard to keep up with what's going on outside of my world. The key thing for you, what's given you the advantage is that you understand how the tech works. You have to stay on that cutting edge of what technology can do and not get complacent on that as you build. Because if someone else comes along and they're using things that you could have used but didn't use, that becomes a real concern for the business. That would be my take. Can you do something with those uh, advices? Uh, I'm not too familiar. What do you mean by smart money exactly? You're obviously going to need some funding to grow the company. And when you're looking for funding, sometimes just because you need it so badly, you'll take it from any source. What I mean by smart money is if you can work with people who understand the space, the mobile space, the contextual space, 
that kind of investment also leads to them introducing you to and a ricochet into other areas of your developmental growth. Because sometimes when you just go for money for the sake of money, even though you desperately need it, by just trying to seek out, and there are VCs that will understand what you're doing, it's been my experience that the smart money is the money that helps accelerate your development. Yeah, so it's yeah. Uh, good advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, uh, uh, well, congratulations again. So, but you. there was another prize, so uh, if you uh, could please uh, leave now. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> oh, gee, thanks a lot. <laughs> Take your prize. <laughs> Take your prize. No, you stay there, Rolf, because we, uh, we want to talk. Yeah, hey, uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Because eh? uh, the other prize was uh, um, the audience prize. Um, th there was an app. Um, yeah, come here. Let's prove, prove, yeah, prove us that you're uh, a winner. Yeah, it's, it's clear. The public's, the pub, the, so, so uh, the public uh, choice uh, award. So, thanks. We've seen it. Uh, that's great. Um, you're from, uh, from from Gig Starter. Um, of course, you've you've been you've been here uh, as well uh, this afternoon. First, congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, did you know that you had so many uh, fans? Uh, well. Of course, we work on a community, and I think that's what one of our uh, important points. Uh, we work really on a community of artists, and uh, I mean, you can see it already by artists subscribing themselves without us chasing for new artists. So uh, yeah, I guess it's a validation of that we're we're, we're really we really possess that. So yeah. that's really cool to see. Yeah. So you're 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 a platform where artists uh, can tell the world that they're looking uh, for gigs and people uh, with clubs uh, can can look for artists. But artists also you, platform. if you want to have a band or a DJ on your yeah. uh, on your uh, you have a band, yeah, can, so you can, can do you both can sides. put your band <laughs> yeah. on the platform, but yeah. you can also book an artist for uh, your birthday party. Okay, okay, I, I can do both. That's really that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, the jury, of course, this is not the jury prize, but this is the audience prize. Jury, what did you think of? Um, um... <laughs> so, so we'll go this way, shall we? Yeah, cool. uh, yeah. So the most interesting thing for me, in order to support artists, you're not taking a percentage fee. That what you're giving them is a flat fee platform, which for me is really valuable because it limits risk for the artist. They know exactly where they stand. There is therefore every incentive. Any, any payment that comes through after they have paid you is upside at which point they might as well get 20 gigs through you. There's no downside getting 20 gigs through you when they could have got 20 gigs on their own. Because they paid that one-off fee, they should use you as much as they can. And that, to me, is really good for the artist. Okay, thank you, Monique. Yes, I, I, I mean, I'm from the events business, and I think there's um, a lot more events that need music than just your standard concert hall. So I think this is an ideal platform for all those people looking for music, be it conferences or parties or city hall. Nothing. <laughs> there was no music yeah, at this event. Uh, Amazing. So year, exactly. Yeah. So I think broadening the field of where live music can be played and how you find the artists to play there. Good choice. Yeah. yeah. So Ralph, you, you, you've spoken to them all. So what did you uh, like about, uh, about them? Well, I think that uh, if you're a, a band trying to make uh, to make uh, progress and just uh, develop an audience. In today's world where there's so much clutter, it's incredibly difficult just to get that initial start. I know just the difficulties of finding an agent that believes in you and then getting the agent to concentrate on you and give you attention is like trying to find the Pope in a massage parlor. You don't find him there very often. But uh, the thing that I, I really thought that was uh, so fundamental about Gigstarter is this is a very interesting way of taking a grassroots uh, developmental uh, curve to help baby bands uh, and a community of musicians talk to each other, working with yourself and creating some initial openings that then will get noticed by the festival organizers, by independent labels, by the more developed labels, by uh, people that are involved in social media where um, I met a guy who used to play in Pink Floyd last week in Los Angeles um, who has a company called Ignited Music in Los Angeles and he works with baby bands to try and establish their first 1,000 supporters because he says if you can have 1,000 supporters and each person tells 10 people that gives you 100,000 supporters and so Gigstarter is the start of 100,000 supporters. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's a lot of compliments. Yeah. So uh, which yeah. one, one of them don't, don't you agree with? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, choose wisely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, the, 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 um, we talk about the things that, the next steps of, uh, of the startups as well. So for you, what will be the next step? 800, uh, if, if I understand right, eight, uh, 800 artists are already on the platform. Exactly. Uh, how, how many gigs do they do? Do, they, do we uh, generate, uh, do we uh, generate now? now? Yeah. Uh, well, last month, 100. Uh, and in general, we're having a growth of between 10 and 20 percent, depending on what you're looking at. Yeah. So that will proceed, and I think the market in the Netherlands will at least be of 400 bands under the radar. I think that later on, uh, booking agencies will start putting their bands as well, but that won't happen now. I think that first we need to go abroad, so that's the plan. We don't want to swim against the current. We're going to want to try a new country, get new bands there, show that we can uh, work it out with a new culture in a new situation and then grow further in the meanwhile grow further in the Netherlands and then show that use that new case uh, to show that we can do more countries and maybe for our bigger funding well we're domination is really big but uh, it's that's not a real symbiotic uh, philosophy but yeah. We, we try to find this by creating a community. We want to grow together with artists. <laughs> okay, so you, so, so you, don't, you don't need marketing money, but you see organic growth. Uh, I see organic going. growth. Well, of course, marketing money would be good, but I think the power of the marketing in our segment is in the is in the mouth to mouth marketing. So, if we would need money, it would be more. It would be, or if we would get money, we would use it for indirect marketing so just networking meet people uh, and expand really expand geographically yeah hey um we uh asked the jury because now they're here and now we can uh, can ask them that so to give you one uh, ad advice yeah, each would be great. so 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 let's do the, the, the round again <laughs> keep your focus on it's the same bit of advice i gave last time <laughs> keep your keep your focus on looking after the artist that's where you started that's why you're doing well those are the guys who benefit most from you. Look after them, they'll look after you. Okay. Monique? Um, well, I think um, you could do with a little bit more storytelling. You know, take some bands out of there that have made surprising gigs at places they would never have gone otherwise without your platform and put them on as testimonials. Because now you, you basically look at the database and you look and you think, oh, okay, I guess it works, maybe. So. You know, if it's mouth to mouth, you need strong stories. So more storytelling. I think that would work better. Ralph? <clears throat> I think that uh, one of the things that would be important to do, particularly uh, here in Holland, is you've got 800 bands now. If you can find some mechanism, exactly as Monique is saying, of the storytelling, but more importantly, when you see a band starting to get word of mouth that grows from 100 people to 500 people to 1,000 people, you've got to get that word out in some form in social media and also cultivate with the journalists that are here. Even though print journalism is not as important as it was, all of those things are markers that help baby bands come up, which in turn brings more bands into your system. Okay, so... Uh, I, I, I I think that the three uh, suggestions together are a nice new strategy, marketing strategy. Okay. <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> um, uh, to th thank you very much. I'll ask the jury one sort of general thing to, to finish off. Uh, Chris, if you look at say, startups uh, that, 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 that for, for next year, what did you miss this year and which party should be around then? So for me, there was some good innovation in live music with the ticket swap side of things. The challenge for me, I feel like the innovation in recorded music gets a lot of attention. There are good innovations in live, monitoring where people are at a festival, traffic management, that kind of thing, that need to develop. So there were a couple of kind of, there were some ideas around, but to actually see delivery on what big data plus sensors can do from a live music point of view, Almost combining the conversation we had this afternoon yeah. would be really interesting for me. Okay, thank you, Monique. Well, a little bit the same thing because I like to be surprised by completely new things. I think our winner was a good example of a new way of, you know, recommending music um, because quite a few of the ideas we saw were excellent ideas, but they were not completely new or completely creative. They were just 
very well executed and yeah. interesting. So I'd like to be surprised, you know, something completely... Yeah. I'd like to see other industries involved. It seems to be a bit narrow sometimes, so yeah. Okay. Big, Ralph, big uh, bold ideas. when you come back next year as a jury uh, chairman, so what, 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 what do you uh, hope for in, well, so all the startups, are, are there things you've missed? The one thing that I missed this year was seeing really interesting, innovative video music production something. Because video is really such a vital force today. I read yesterday that the Swedish uh, artist, he's not a music artist, but he's a social media artist, PewDiePie, who has yeah. 40 million followers, yeah. has just been given his own channel at Disney. He started out broadcasting from his kitchen. And so the whole notion of uh, really interesting video music just think of the great videos, what launched Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, an incredible video. And today, the audience is very, very responsive to unusual, interesting video. That's something that I thought uh, might have been more visit, vis something visual. Yeah, and what I hope is, uh, the thing is, because it's all, say, related to music, but you don't see innovations in making, uh, uh, making music. I, I, I'm hoping for, for that, so that in the end the people say, well, this is how you can make music, or this is how you can make new sorts of music, or whatever it is, on that technical side, if we talk about music and tech. So that's my personal um, uh, thing, uh, thing in this. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, all of you. Thank you for, um, for watching, for listening. We've been doing two days of uh, interviews, of startup pitches, of talks. You can find them all on our uh, website, fastmovingtargets.nl, and on our YouTube channel, Fast Moving Targets. So uh, if you didn't see them all, uh, spend some time, uh, well, in uh, the next days, the next weeks, uh, etc. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks, Buma, uh, for, uh, for this Buma Music Meets Tech event.